and everything stops for tea. And a very good evening. Uh, normally it's the uh, morning or the afternoon, but tonight, a very good evening to you. Welcome uh, to uh, the fourth of uh, A Cup of Tea with Mr. G. And I've had various people on, but tonight I'm very, very excited because it's the first time I have a, a, a comedian. I couldn't ask for anybody better than this gentleman. Would you uh, please welcome the one and only Mr. Paul Eastwood. How are you, Paul? Um, oh, mate. Hello? Isn't it weird? Like, Paul? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Can you, can you hear me? Are you there, Paul? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Paul. I can hear you. Are well, you just there? while we're waiting for our connection you. to balance out here, if you've got the comment... Yeah, I am. I'm there. Are you here? Can you hear oh, me? We've got the gremlins. You've got the comment. Yeah, we have. I can hear you. That's brilliant. If you've got the comments button uh, on your screen, be so kind as to just drop a comment to say hi, hi to Paul. I'll read these out as we go along. I'm sure there's lots and lots of uh, your mates in the business who just want to say hello. I've got a couple of comments coming through here. And <laughs> uh, um, we've got uh, David Hewlett and also Bill White. So I'll call them out as we go along. Thank you so much indeed for taking the time to uh, speak to me this evening. Can I just ask you, how many of these podcasts and uh, webinars, whatever you want to call them, how many of these do you do? Uh, well, Mr. G, firstly, thanks for having me on. And my pleasure to meet you finally, because, I know. well, we've never, isn't it ironic how you feel you've got an association with someone and you know them, but you've never actually, we've, we've only met briefly once at a showcase, but we were both preoccupied. It's just yeah, really passing weird, ships. Isn't it? Um, it is. But exactly. The, these things have passed me by as well, mate. These, where, these, these Zoom things, these interviews, they've just, uh, it's all of a sudden, my dear friend Stephen, who runs the Keeping Variety Live, said, You should do some. Um, and you know, we were live, don't we? Live, live. And uh, yeah, I've actually enjoyed them, but I've probably only done two or three. I've done a po cu couple of podcasts, but nothing, nothing to write home about. You know, I think it's probably well, me that listens to them and the other people that have done them. There's nobody else listens to them. <laughs> I was going to ask you, Paul, uh, if you had done a lot of these, what would what was the question you get asked the most? Um, uh, probably, and I hate to say it, uh, Chris, it's the the controversy this because we're in changing times now more so at the moment with the what's acceptable what's not comedy material how you think after this covid because we've gone through times with covid with the the black lives matter and all that and how material uh is gonna people are becoming very sensitive now aren't they people are scared of their own shadow and whether when we come out of this, which we will, whether it will change the material or the, or the type of stuff that comedians can perform live, you know, and that's probably and also the question because you know I've got well. a bit of con Sorry, yeah. yeah, can you carry on there, Paul? I've got a slight delay there, but you got it. You were going to say you got a minute controversy with what? I got in a little bit of controversy many years ago with the uh, in Turkey. I did a show. It was just a booking. We all do bookings, with it, and it was quite yeah. reasonable money. And it was for the the UKIP party. I didn't know. And um, then this was on the Friday night. By the Sunday morning, I was headlines of the newspaper. I was all over the newspapers because you, by association, I was involved with the UKIP party, which was all complete rubbish. And it really it ruined everything for a short space of time. It became very exciting when you're on page news, but then the 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 excitement wore off and it became a bit terrifying, you know, because it didn't go sure. away. It it rolled on and on and on. Um, but I have a great I have a great opinions on this, you know. Material funny's funny. We don't set out to offend anybody, but people always want to complain, don't they? You know. I, Danny Postal, I think, is an absolutely brilliant impressionist, and up the impressionist is what I say. But I think I read on a post that he he does a fantastic yeah. Diane Abbott impression, and he got into trouble with that, and and somebody said, "Oh, you can't do that." Well, why yeah. can't you do an impression of Diane Abbott? 
Yeah, um, he was talking to Jim Davidson about it. The, uh, the person who said that, that got it, he got into the debate about said you don't um, couldn't explain why you just can't. Well, no, but I'm I'm interested why because that's she's a black woman. Yeah, but I do white women and I do black men and I do what is what so by the if there is any you by pe picking these people out and not impersonating them then you're singling them out aren't you yeah, that yeah. makes it but more there's so offensive. many there's so many great black women you know there's yeah yeah i can't i can't get my head around it either paul i'm going to ask you a question i, I want to take you back and tell me what Shit. sort of kid you were <laughs> what, what sort of kid were oh, you god well, hopefully not like my son now. He's free. We've just managed to get him asleep before this, um, and he's just had a, he's just kicked off um, because he wanted my he wanted, he wanted my iPad, my my pods. <laughs> he saw them, wanted them. We had to get them off. Um, what sort of kid was I? Shy and retiring, really. Well, that's a quite really... that's quite an unusual well, answer. I wasn't expecting that. Very shy, of retiring, and very i think a little bit what they describe as probably a bit of a man be pan bit of a is that politically correct can you say that about i I'm, don't I'm, know i'll i'll, <laughs> I'll have a word with boris uh, uh, uh boris uh can we say no yeah, yeah. of course man be pan be <laughs> is the sort of thing that we are trying to stamp out so uh <laughs> keep safe <laughs> keep indoors and 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 and, and, and keep not being a man be pan be stop saying it <laughs> so I, I really am surprised being a, a me, man be pan it, me. because here you are yeah, I doing the hardest in, job I in the world and I, did, I didn't do I wasn't funny yeah yeah let me just ask you you know it's a cup of tea Mr G yeah I ain't got but it's tea. not really I've got cider right. in mine all right. I've got cider okay. in here all right <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. What happened was the what happened was Paul that the shop ran out of tea, so they yeah. said I can give us some cider. So I thought that would do it. I put it in my teacup, and nobody would be in the none the wiser, apart from the fact I've just I told see. everybody. Okay. Yeah. I so anyway, so you've you you've gone from being a kid from being a member. Did you actually find that comedy was something you you could actually lose yourself in and listen uh, no, to comedy? I used to yeah, I suppose I used to watch the. You remember you used to go to a video shop? Of course, you, you know, oh, you'd, yeah. shop, you'd hire a video for a pound yeah. or something for, two, for yeah. a night. And I used to hire the ones at the top, you know, the Jim Davison's, Bernard Manning's. They were next to the naughty ones, the adult ones, because they were 18 plus. And you used to go, oh, all right, well, I can rent that. And then I'd watch these people, the great comics, that obviously now the stuff that they were doing then is now not acceptable because times change. But you used to watch the stuff then and think, you know these guys holding the attention of an audience for two hours, an hour on a on a video. You just think that's incredible. And then, but I had no slant towards show business. I failed the audition for the Amateur Dramatics um, Association. Uh, didn't do anything really. I used to do magic shows as a child for the other kids. That was my first thing, magic. You know, um, but I yeah, I, I've got a love of magic as well. Terrible at it. I, I used to do yeah. magic as well. I, um, I had a an Indian guy at school and we formed a magic act. And because I love magic so much, I knew that, uh, that uh, some of the great magicians, they had a, uh, it's very much like Penn and Teller. They had the assistant who didn't speak. So this was the whole magic act. And I'd have him all dressed yeah. up in Indian robes and stuff like this. And I'd been tails and everything. And we didn't have any music, and, and people thought that we, there was something wrong with us. They thought we, we'd actually come from, you know, a, 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 this is our day out from, from you know, it, it was uh, very some ill thought place. out. We, from... Yes, some, yes, you can't mention place, you can't, no. Ah, I don't know. What you and, and, and that. <laughs> you, you, don't know, you don't know what to say now, do you? You're like self editing. I was so, talking but that, that to someone. Was, to say something, someone interviewed me about TV now, about how it's all changed, about probably what, have you still got aspirations to do TV? And I know the only chance I'd ever talk on TV now is probably a game show, but I think that's, you know, time is ticking for that. But anyway, 
um, I was asked to comment on our TV and I was talking about that. Is it the repair shop that's really popular? Is yes. show? Yeah, well, that's the way, isn't it? They make TV shows. They're cheap to make. And it's the public entertaining the public, like reality TV. Yeah. It's cheap. And, yeah. it's, and um, I said, I've got into that from the repair shop. I mean, hours I spend uh, down the end of the garden in the shed rubbing up an old puff. And um, <laughs> the guy went, Boris, <laughs> Boris, come, come back. So, <laughs> and obviously, and there's more, he, and there's he, more. You know, he's he's <laughs> gone completely nuts. This bloke, like, no, no, no. I said, what do you mean? No, I said the the whole premise of comedy is double meaning. It's double. You know, when you work the cruise ships, you work. They don't trust on your cruise ships. But when I work, because you've still got to make it, it's still got to be relatively clean. And it's all about what the audience do with the joke, isn't it? They do what they want with it. It's yeah. clean when it leaves yeah. the stage. Yeah. But I think you're you're a very, very clever um, comedian because you your, your personality from school then, you've, you've created this comic character uh, or style of comedy. So how did you go from school from being, you know, a very quiet kid to the persona that you have on stage, which is just people were so excited the fact that you're coming on the show today because <laughs> they think you're absolutely awesome, which you are, but you have a very distinctive style. And how did you actually build that style? Well, you have to learn, don't you, from, uh, from it's the only thing you can't, you can, you have to do, you have to fail at it while you're learning don't you that's the hardest that's the way to learn so i was mm. i had a dear manager for a short time called barry dyer you know barry in ipswich and i said to him after i was a haven mate on the holiday centers i i just rang him and said i'm a comedian and he went are oh, you yeah. i went yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I am, yeah. And he went all right okay, well i'm just Finished a relationship with Shane Ritchie. He's done quite well, so I'll have a look at you. So he he put me on as a comedian on a Valentine's night in a marquee and um, said, yeah, well, you're not, are you? And I said, <laughs> well, no. But... <laughs> and I said, but, you know, everyone loves a trier. And he went, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll put you in the talent shows. Um, so I, I developed these. I went through about 15 styles of comedy before I found the, the sort of what's abrasive, aggressive, dislikable character that I have now on stage. I went through loads. <laughs> I was doing a, a Ken Goodwin, I was doing a laughing thing, laughing at my own jokes, like giggling at all my jokes. Like, was that Ken Goodwin who used to laugh at his own jokes? Settle down now. S settle down now, settle down. <laughs> yeah, 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 that, that is, well, that is him, yeah. So that, but it should be, because that's your job, isn't it? So, and, uh, <laughs> Barry went. I, Barry went. That, that doesn't suit you. So then I did a. Uh, I went for a silly styles of having these weird sort of movements, and it just. And then I just settled for suddenly that. Yeah, that was the carry on bloke, wasn't it? Yeah, you, you, Jack Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing worked. So Barry just said, "Why not try being yourself?" And I thought, God, I don't need to be doing that really. But that's how it ended up. So I think. You, if you're closer to your art yourself, because an audience like honesty is that the right thing? They like you to be true to yourself, don't they? I think. I, I um, think um, when people say uh, you know difference between a comedian and a, an impressionist, well, I could never be a comedian because I think a comedian, a true comedian. Oh, I've got a comment up here then. Uh, uh, quite extraordinary, Paul. Uh, somebody has just said, uh, Paul Eastwood, a quiet kid. I do not believe it. Ah, oh, extraordinary. And that was from Simon Ledger. Doesn't believe you're a quiet kid. <laughs> but when, when people say about being a comedian, oh, Simon, I think a true comedian. Yeah. I think a true comedian is somebody who just views the world and they, they talk about the world as they see it and what makes them laugh and what makes them angry. Yeah. And so yeah. as opposed to impressionists where we, yeah. we do it, it's a whole different uh, sort of slant as to, you know, we, we take somebody and then obviously try and make them funny. So I don't think I could ever be a comedian like you are because – um, you are a, a true comedian and a fantastic comedian, and just the number of people uh, you applaud it go before you because 
this style that you have is totally unique, I think. Yeah, I mean, it, people have said, I mean, obviously you would, you go for the people you've watched, don't you? And I, I do have, I do like the people that just can go and just talk. It's an hour just talking, just a microphone. Um, and I do try and just do that. And it, it, it is... It is tough sometimes, and it goes either ways because I don't write it down. I have a sort of little bit of a plan, but I don't write the show. I don't know what comes after what, so you are in the hands of the audience really. So if, when you know you get the t if you get the tough nights, you think bloody I wish I planned something because they, if you've planned it, you can just go through it, can't you? And you know. But it's the hardest I, thing, Paul, is is to work off an audience. I know people like Monkhouse. Yeah. Bob Monkels, he could be in an audience and just be able to <laughs> feed off the audience and then suddenly, yes, says something. And, and his brain, <laughs> yeah. his brain must have been split second, but your brain must be split second in, in regards to being able to think on your feet. And if you haven't got anything, when I say you haven't got anything planned, you, you've got stuff planned, but the feed off the audience is a big part of your style, would you say? Yeah, absolutely. And Monkhouse always used to say you have to have three lines for every single eventuality. So he would had a Rolodex, three jokes for everything that could possibly Brilliant. happen. So he just have to. You, his thinking time was going through that Rolodex, going right. Uh, yeah. A lady's just said she's from, you know, what did he say? What was the the? What, it was live at the, the lakeside or something. And lady, what's your name? Uh, Marine. His, her name was Marie or Marine. And he said, I've always wanted to be in the Marines. Uh, but it wasn't <laughs> like it, it, There's no way he planned that. That was just in there within one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Fantastic. Boom. And it, it's not a great example of his work, but how that's, oh, that's, that's a great skill. But, you know, there yeah. are people, do, yeah, there are people are doing that now. That's the way people work. But comics, um, I think to take in all, and also something in for an audience for the first time, you know, I'm mean, your one for always doing new characters and, you know, also the way you've rebranded the show, you do a show for that sort of audience. You do a show for the cruise audience. I think mean, I saw mm. you at the showcase when we briefly met, it was, it was a tough showcase audience, but you'd rechanged your show to suit that holiday market. Yeah. And you were doing when, when my, it was a lady. Yeah. When my wife was alive, hello, are you there, Paul? Hopefully you haven't gone. Oh, are you there? When my when my wife no, was alive, alive. Uh, all right. When my wife was alive, uh, she said, "Right, you got to go and do another showcase." I said, "Okay." So where are you going to go? Viva Blackpool. And so, right. so we're up to Viva Blackpool, and my corky, Mrs. G, she went to the bar, and Ray Martin, lovely Ray Martin, was there. Yeah. He goes, "What's your lad?" done to upset you so much that you put them to do comedy in a showcase with this lot here she goes oh it'd be good for him oh you know and so therefore as you said i had to really just change yet and i knew it's going to be a because you looked at the program and you thought but no comedy no comedy it was me and el loco i think we were the only two people yeah who were doing comedy and, uh, and the noise of it and you think you know because you, you can't be seen can't be heard you're on your back foot uh, but it yeah. was, um, you know, I, I did it, and I, 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 some very nice people wrote some very nice things. So, uh, but I think you got to do that. You just got to go and and not be frightened, and just get out there and yeah, and, and do right. it. Do they I've got a message the hell out of you, like me though. Oh, we got a message. What? Simon, Here we again. got a message. Uh, I can't wait to get Mr. Eastwood down to the Isle of Wight, but in a club, not Warners this time, so I can show him off to the Islanders. There we go. But what's it? it sounds like you he's going to parade me in sort of a gimp costume or something. <laughs> yeah, I got it, but it just sounds like he's going to parade me through the streets, show, show me to the <laughs> Islanders. <laughs> and they, hail! Hail to the comic they call Mr. Like Eastwood. That. It'd be like the Wicker Man. <laughs> They'll have you up in a basket on the, the, um, on the, first on the top of the also, castle. Mate, I wanted to say, um, you know, whether it's how sorry we all are about you, with your news and congratulations oh, to you for being, you. Um, throwing yourself into what you're best at yeah. and filling your time. Yeah, and yeah well, that's very good. And I'll tell you. you and, uh, 
uh, the, the amount of love and support I've had from people in the business, friends, family, honestly, it's uh, it knocked me sideways because Lindy was my uh, corky, was my manager as well. And so you're so used to, you know, uh, uh, your, your good lady, does she give you honest feedback? Yes, yeah, she does. Um, she, she, she's allowed to speak to me occasionally. She can't look me in the eye. Uh, but I do let her, she she does certainly give me honest feedback um but she's also developed sort of a thing called a sense of humor which I'm not <laughs> I'm not keen on and she said well, there was the other night I said I'd do this I'd just do a gag of the month and it's a thing that Stephen Stephen Medler said you should do and I do it I do a couple of topical gags and she I said it's only got so many because I it's passed me by all this I said it's only got 600 views the last one got a thousand she said that's because it's crap <laughs> i went i beg your pardon i was going to launch myself across the kitchen wow well, but um you need but you need very very honest if you're not getting the, honest the feedback thing, from the people close it's going yeah to... the thing i miss the most paul is that um, yeah my corky would say to me if, if we're on a ship together or on land together, the last thing she'd say when I was all suited and booted in my stage outfit, she goes, right, have a good show and don't be shite. And even if I was in India <laughs> on a cruise ship, she would text it to me, have a good show, don't be shite. And so I'm going to miss that, but I'm going to have to get a little picture. I'm going to have to put, I'm going to have to put a word thing on it to say, don't be shite. I have to put that on my dressing room table before I go on stage. So listen, talking about shows, yeah. and uh, I'm going to ask you, because it's very, very exciting yeah. uh, what you've got in here, uh, Waves of Laughter, Comedy Extravaganza. Oh, mate, now, you have got 27th of yeah. August, 2021. Can, if you, hopefully you can see that. It's a little bit small, but talk me through this. Well, what the, the PI Entertainment is a, is a thing I created. I'm not going to bore people with this, and I'm not plugging it either. It's it's just I'm it's, plugging it. <laughs> you know, people will be dying to get out. But yeah, yeah thank you. But the PIE Entertainment um, is Pie Entertainment. It's supposed to be a very tenuous reference to custard pie, as in putting a custard yeah. pie. But my initials are Pauline and Eastwood, and we've created a brand. And I started doing the odd local golf club, and they said, "Can you put a comedy night on?" host you host it and just get a couple of your mates tell us how much it is and uh we'll we'll sell the tickets so we're doing this now we've got a hundred private clients which are community centers village halls golf clubs uh leisure centers and then we do the theater stuff which is the the biggest stuff right which is i'm, I'm going like, to call these it? ones out 27th of august 2021 the pavilion theater in galston and you've got yeah. on there your your good self, Richard Morton, and also Phil Reed. And then I think we've got on the twenty fourth of September, Layston. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Layston. Little. Yeah, Layston. Yeah, that's correct, mate. Great that impressionist. The great. Yeah. Yeah. The great impressionist Danny Postel. Fantastic. Also, you got um, another face there, and that's Jenny. Collier, I think John Jenny Collier. Jenny Collier, yeah. And then because what we're doing, yeah, yeah. Talk to me, what tell me, tips. We're Talk mixing to me. the, we're mixing the variety, the the variety acts, which I'd say a traditional act like myself, but we're also using the guys off the, you know, the what they say is the alternative circuit. Although, yeah, there's a very grey area now. I think fun, funny's funny. If you're funny, you're yeah. funny. Um, or yeah. you can, you know whether you're talking about politics or whether you're, but we've got these people. Rich Morton um, was the original support act for Lee Evans, Joe Brand, and he's just incredible. And then you got Jack there on this one. Jack Jack is a Jack northern guy that's Bledo. a very Joe Pasquale style act. Yep, yep. What? Um, what is, what is, is so there that a Joe Pasquale act, is he? <laughs> what a Joe Pasquale act, you did, you did, you did. <laughs> yeah, don't say that to Joe. What? <laughs> No, and oh, that's a great Welsh name, isn't it? <laughs> Caris, Caris Nelms, isn't it lovely? I, I've got another one here. One of my favourite entertainers, Mandy, Mandy Mooden, <laughs> and yeah, Steve Hewler. I work, 
Yeah, well, I've never worked with Mandy. I've never met Mandy, another lady I've never met. I've had the pleasure to work with the fantastic Steve Hewlett. And uh, he mentioned the other day about having a book called A Got the Gear by Ray Allen. And I just yes. ordered it on Amazon because fantastic act. Fantastic. So you do an impression, let me don't ask you. You do Ray Allen. Do you do Ray in your. Ray group? Allen and Lord Charles. <laughs> you do that, which I thought. Here we go. So, uh, <laughs> hello, how are you? <laughs> no, no, silly ass, silly ass. This is little Johnny. Hello, Johnny. How are you, Gugner? He just said, he said, Gugner. No, he didn't. He did. He just said, how are you, Gugner? <laughs> no, he didn't, you silly ass. I'm closer to him than you are. <laughs> That'll be that's Brilliant. exactly what I sound off, like when I finish this bottle of wine. Uh, <laughs> now listen, Paul. I'm gonna. Tr I can never get this around the, the right. I I always love to give a big shout out. Now a little ticker tape here. There we have yeah, Pie Entertainment at Hotmail .com. To find out more about you, yeah. find out more about the shows. That's who they need to contact. Yeah, but just go on face. Well, Facebook. It's Paul Paul Eastwood comedian on the Facebook. Great. That's it. Paul Eastwood okay. comedian on the Facebook. Paul Eastwood. I'm on your page. Go to I'm on your page. Right. Well, listen, I, I've yeah, got to go and recharge my cup of tea. I've got to go and recharge my cup of tea, cider. All right. Tea. Sorry, sorry, it's my cup of tea and my cider. Uh, what's um, When do you think, before we, we wrap things up, when, what's your plan of yeah. when things are going to come back? What's your? You get asked this question a lot, so forgive me if I'm asking the same thing. But what's your crystal ball? No, no, no. Look, I've got, my, I've got mine here. Look, there we are. That's 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 how I'm telling the future. Right. My crystal ball. And what did that? What's have? your views? Because I went to one of those. Well, I went to. Um, there's two things I've done to, with a view to getting a plan. I spoke to my because I don't have. I spoke to my hairstylist today. Um, and I said, I need to see you. And she gave me a definite date. And I said, <clears throat> can I have a ponytail? And she said, once upon a time, a pony went to the seaside. <laughs> so <laughs> right. the other thing uh -huh. is someone said to me right at the, <laughs> someone said to me right at the beginning, nothing's going to happen internationally until people have had the, the two jabs. Yeah. Right. So the prediction is, because you know as well, Warners have been absolutely incredible through this whole thing. Oh, as brilliant. soon as they can get us back to work, they get us back to work, yeah, they change yeah. all the rules. Boris changes the rules. They build bigger screens. They put more arrows yeah. down. They yeah. don't, so that they're, I reckon, realistically, cruise-wise, the, the UK cruises, you know, by mid-June, UK work, well, it does. It starts May, doesn't it? Social distances yeah. outside gigs are in May. Yeah. So Steve, yeah. Simon Ledger will know. Simon Ledger's got his, his finger. Uh, let me on see the if this. Oh, if we got more. Let me put my glasses back. You say about the jab. Right. Somebody gave Donald Trump a jab, followed by a right uppercut. <laughs> Let's have a look at the comments. <laughs> right. It's not, um... uh, I've got this one that says. Ah, oh, I don't know what that means. I've got somebody who says that meant, oh, that's meant to say, you're the best. You're the best. Better than all the rest. Right. So that was from a Facebook. I don't know who that is. Love, love, love that Chris Silly ass. <laughs> that's, yep. that's obviously that uh, means, somebody yep. who likes Ray Rachel. Allen. Uh, we've got another one here. Uh, good to see you, gents. I, I presume that's us, and oh, they're not awesome. in the town. And just yeah. desperate to go somewhere. Another well, Facebook brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got this one here. Nice oh. one, fellas. Oh, I'm losing it. Just a minute. I'm disappearing. All right. Do these ever fall out of your ears? Do these fall out of your ears? Because I've, I've, uh, they keep running out of mine, dropping out. They Let's did go around on, this way. Um, the first time my wife got me these for Christmas just before things kicked off and I went on a long flight and I went to sleep and I woke up and that because I knew that she'd got these she said don't lose those they're expensive and I woke up on this long flight and they both gone 
And I was going to do like shut the flight down. Someone's nicked me flipping here, put, shut the flight. And I just looked and they were, well, there was one over there. <laughs> you know how you sleep on an aeroplane where you, where you wake up and you're heading yeah. for the yeah, boat next yeah, to you. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, Paul, it's been an, uh, uh, I've loved chatting to you. Uh, hopefully yeah, next mate. time I meet you, then we'll be able to perhaps have a point and a good chat about comedy. I just love talking about comedy. I love talking to comedy entertainers. Uh, you bring an awful lot of pleasure into people's lives and it's been far too long uh, for you to be off the circuit. Like all us entertainers, we just can't wait to get back and, and do what we're, um, what we're meant to do. And that's to put a smile on people's faces. So thank you. Yeah. Love to you. Love to your family. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to take too, you off the and, screen. Uh, all right. Well, that's good. Uh, God bless to you and all your the people watching, mate, and stay strong. Thank you ever so much. Cheerio, Paul. God bless. Well, thank you very much indeed, Paul. Uh, I really enjoy chatting to Paul. What a lovely, lovely fellow and a great act. Um, on Friday morning at 10 o'clock, I'll be uh, chatting to Anna Ray. Now, Anna, uh, a lovely singer from the Northeast, and uh, she has anagrams, which is a fantastic concept during this very, very tough time. And Anna has uh, taken her beautiful voice, and she's just put some happiness into people's lives and uh, it's been incredible. So I'm going to be chatting to Anna with a cup of tea, Mr. G on Friday, this Friday coming at 10 o'clock. Just a quick shout out. Thank you to all the people who have been bidding. As you know, myself and Rose Cook Month, we're, we're raising money for two charities. One is uh, Corky's Hospital Charity and the other is Rose's Charity, the Duncan Edwards Foundation. If you love stylish clothes, uh, as 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 Lord Sugar would say, there's no toot, right? There's no toot, right? It's nice, nice, good stuff, right? We have got um, on Memories of Mrs G Facebook page. Just go to that, and you'll see all the lots which we have actually put uh, up very, very low starting bids. Okay, so uh, there'll be great presents, and you can get them at absolute bargain. And all that money, I mean, one hundred percent, one hundred. I'm I'm going like Donald Trump again. 100%, 100%, of all that money is going to the two charities. So please support that. And also, you've still got time to enter. It's only £10 a ticket. And you might win uh, two VIP tours of Old Trafford, including lunch. So that's a great prize for only £10. And if you if you win it, don't think, oh, I'm not going to be able to use it because of the lock. No. We've extended the expiry date. And also, if you do win it and uh, you want to give it to somebody as a, a present, a Christmas present, birthday present, you can do that as well. So all the details on that are on uh, Memories of Mrs. G, the Facebook page. Thank you so much to all those people who've tuned in. Thank you so much indeed for the comments. I'm, uh, uh, it's, it's been absolutely brilliant there. And I try and show them as we go along. Good to see you too, Bill. Uh, I wish you a pleasant rest of the evening. Uh, I've got to go and uh, fill my uh, cup of tea up with some uh, some more tea. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. You know, tea, tea, you know, especially from the West Country. Uh, so from me, Christopher G, look forward to seeing you Friday, 10 o'clock with the wonderful Anna Ray. And it's a very, very good night. And I have to, as always... And, of course, this is the problem when you're actually short-sighted. I have to get the lads in the band to sign off with this. So for me, Christopher G, cheerio! Everything's up for tea.